Hello YouTube, it is story time with Kevin. The conduct of Senator Joseph R. McCarthy was one of the most vexing problems facing Eisenhower's first administration. The Wisconsin Senator's no-holds-barred search for subversives in government turned up none and was an affront to political fair play, decency, and civil liberties. Eisenhower avoided confronting McCarthy, saying privately that he would not get into the gutter with that guy. The president also feared that a showdown would splinter the Republican Party. Instead, he hoped the media and Congress would bring McCarthy down. While Eisenhower pursued this indirect strategy to undermine the senator, his administration practiced its own brand of anti-communism. A new executive order in 1953 expanded the criteria under which federal workers could be dismissed as security risks. In its first three years in office, the Eisenhower administration dismissed 1,500 people, more than Truman had fired in twice the time. One of Eisenhower's most controversial decisions was his denial of the clemency to Julius and Ethel Rosenberg who had two young sons, the Rosenbergs, having been sentenced to death, were executed in 1953. In 1954, the Communist Control Act demonstrated that both liberals and conservatives shared in the consensus on anti-communism, the measure which, in effect, made membership of the Communist Party illegal, passed in the Senate unanimously and in the House by 265 votes to two. Its chief sponsor, Liberal Democratic Hubert H. Humphrey of Minnesota, told his colleagues just before he cast his vote, We have closed all of the doors. These rats will not get out of the trap. As for Senator McCarthy, he finally transgressed the limits of what the Senate and the public would tolerate. His crucial mistake was taking on the U.S. Army in front of millions of television viewers. At the issue was the senator's wild accusation that the army was shielding and promoting communists. He cited the case of one army dentist, the so-called Army McCarthy hearings held by a Senate subcommittee in 1954, became a showcase for the senator's abusive treatment of witnesses. McCarthy, apparently drunk, alternately ranted and slurred his words. Finally, after he maligned a young lawyer who was not even involved in hearings, Army Counsel Joseph Welch protested, Have you no sense of decency, sir? The gallery erupted in applause, and McCarthy's career as a witch hunter was over. The Senate finally condemned McCarthy in a 67-22 to 22 vote in December 1954 for not, defiling, not for defiling the Bill of Rights, but for sullying the dignity of the Senate. He remained a senator, but exhaustion and alcohol took their toll. McCarthy died in 1957 at the age of 48. President Eisenhower's reluctance to discredit McCarthy publicly had given the senator other right-wing members of Congress and some private and public institutions enough reign to divide the nation and destroy the careers of many innocent people. McCarthyism demoralized and frightened federal workers some of whom were driven from public service. The anti-communist campaigns of the 1950s also discouraged people from freely expressing themselves and hence from debating critical issues. Fear, in short, helped sustain the Cold War consensus.